part 25 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss self-hosting a WCF service in a Windows Forms application. This is continuation to part 24, so please watch part 24 before proceeding. Hosting a WCF service in a Windows Forms application is very similar to hosting it in a console application. We discussed hosting a WCF service in a console application in part 24. In this video, we'll be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous session. So we want to design a Windows form that looks like this with a start and a stop button. When we click the start button, we want the service to start and when we click stop button, we want the service to stop. So first, let's go ahead and design a form that looks like this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project that we worked with in the previous session. To this solution, let's go ahead and add a new Windows Forms application. So click Windows under Install, Install Templates, Windows Forms application, and let's name the project as Windows Host. Click OK. So this should add a Windows Forms application. Now we need to design the user interface that looks like this. So let's go ahead, drag and drop two button controls and a label control. So we want two buttons and a label. So here we have the label, button 1 and button 2. And let's change the properties of button 1. First of all, let's call, um, let's set the name of the button to btn start and then the text to start. Along the same lines, let's set the name of button 2 to btn stop and the text on that to stop. And let's delete this default text within the label which says label 1 and let's set the name of label 1 to LBL message and then let's also set font size to 10 points and let's also turn this bold flag to true. Alright, so we are done designing the form. Now in order to host the WCF service, first of all we need to add a reference to the WCF service. So let's go ahead and do that within this Windows host project. So right click on references folder, add a reference and we want to add a reference to hello service project which has our WCF service. So add that reference and then we also need to add a reference to the WCF assembly which is system.servicemodel. So let's go ahead and add that as well. Alright, now when we click the start button that's when we want the WCF service to start. Okay, And one more important thing that we need to do is to add the configuration file, the application configuration file which is going to contain the configuration for our WCF service. So first of all we need to add that application configuration file. So add new item and we want to add application configuration file. And now here we need to specify the configuration, you know, the endpoints, the base addresses, you know, whether we want to exchange metadata or not. And if you remember, we have specified the configuration within the app.config file of the console application in the previous session. So we are going to copy this config from there to the app.config file of our Windows host project. All right. So we have the configuration as well right now. So let's get to the form. Double click the start button to generate the click event handler. And then now let's bring in system.servicemodel namespace. So at the class level, that is at the form level, let's go ahead and create a private variable of type service host. This is the main class that we basically use, you know, to host our WCF service. So let's call it host. And when we click the start button, let's create a new instance of this service host. And when we create a new instance of the service host, we need to specify the type of service that we want to host. And it is nothing but hello service, which is present in hello service namespace. And what we want to do, we want to open the communication channels. So invoke the open method of 
service host object okay so at this point we have the service host opened okay and what else do we need to do now when we click the start button you know the service should start and automatically the button should be disabled okay and stop button should be enabled and we want to display this message service started within the label control so let's go ahead and do that so btn start dot enable equals false and let's set button stop enabled to true and within the label control we want to say service started okay now let's actually copy this code and then paste it within the constructor of this form 1 so what is this going to do when we run the windows forms application obviously this form 1 will be loaded so when the constructor of this form 1 is called you know automatically the service is going to start so whenever we run the project you know even at that point of time we want the um, service to start automatically so we are calling the code within the constructor which is going to start the service by default when we run the um, you know program all right similarly when we stop when we click on the stop button what should happen we should be able to stop the service and to stop the service all you do is invoke the close method which is going to close the communication channels okay so once the service is stopped what we need to do we need to enable start button and we need to disable stop button and here within the label we say service stopped okay so very simple code here to start and stop a WCF service and this code you can find on you know the same code here on the slide okay and then if you notice the code here there's one more even handler method called form1 underscore form close so when is this um, event handler invoked whenever somebody closes the ser Windows service host what we want to do in that case is you know we want to close the communication channels so we are going to invoke the host.close so basically we are going to have the same piece of code within form1 I mean basically form closed event as well so let's go ahead and generate the event handler for form closed and in order to do that click on the form anywhere and then get to the properties of the form by pressing F4 and then click on this events icon and then there within the events you should see form closed event okay double click on the event so the event handler should method should be automatically generated and here what we are going to do is copy and paste this code and then since the application is closed we don't really have to set the text in the label control because nobody gets to see that anyway so let's go ahead and delete that all right so we are done now let's set our windows host as the startup project and then run this program by pressing control f5 so look at that it says service started okay and look at that start button is disabled stop button is enabled now when we click stop it says service stop start the service so the host itself is working as expected now let's quickly test if the WCF service is working as expected so in the previous session we have also created a client project which is called Windows client okay so here the Windows service is already running okay so let's go ahead and run the client right now okay and let's pass you know name as Prajim click get message this you know the WCF service should respond and it should work in the same way okay so look at that we get the response back let's say hello Prajim 1 2 get message we get the message back okay now let's go to the service host and stop the service okay so basically you know it's taking a little bit of time here to stop the service it's going to gracefully stop the service if there are any outstanding requests it's going to service them and then stop gracefully now let's go back to the client and then click get message now obviously we will get an exception you know the socket connection was aborted and if you look at the details basically you know it should mention somewhere the um, service is, is not able to handle the request it has refused it okay 
that's basically because we have stopped the service. So now let's go ahead and start the service and click get message and see what's going to happen. Look at that, we still get an exception. Okay, and why is that? You know, because look at this, the service says started, but we still get an exception. Okay, that's basically because look at what it says, the communication object cannot be used for communication because it is in a faulted state. So the client proxy has actually been faulted. Let's actually look at that, you know, by debugging. So here the service has started now. Let's go ahead and run the Windows client in debug mode and then put a breakpoint right here within the button click event. Okay. Now when we say let's bring in the service host as well. So here we have the service host and the client. Now obviously when we pass name and then click get message, you know, we are going to get the response back. So we have the response back. Let's go ahead and stop the service. So it takes a second to close the service. And then once the service is stopped, when we click get message, we will get an exception. So here, when we press F5, we get an exception and that's understood. And that's basically because, you know, the service has been stopped. Okay, let's close that. Let's actually stop debugging. So let's start the service. Now here what we need to do is we need to check the state of the client. So if client dot state equals communication state dot faulted. Okay. If it is faulted, then what we want to do is we want to create a new instance of the client proxy because if the client proxy is faulted, you cannot use the same instance of the proxy class for communicating with your WCF service. So if it's in a faulted state, we are creating a new instance of the uh, proxy. And let's also try, I mean, wrap all this inside a try catch block so that if there is any exception, we, we will have a chance to display that within the label control. So let's catch the exception and display that within the label. So label to dot text equals e dot message. All right. So with all these changes, let's go ahead. You know, the service is already running. Let's go ahead and run our Windows client. There were build errors. Let's look at what are those. A local variable named e cannot be used. Okay. That's because we already have another object with the same name. So let's call this exception EX. All right, let's go ahead and run this once again. Okay, so here the service is running. Let's get to the client. Actually, let's disable these breakpoints. So let's pass the name, click get message. So it should work. Hello, Prajim. Let's stop the service now. It takes a second to stop the service. And let's now click get message. Look at that. We get an error. Okay. And that's because the service is stopped. Now let's start the service. And then let's click this get message. Look at that. Now it works as expected. Okay, so basically the previous time it didn't work when we start, uh, stopped and started the service. That's because we are using the same instance of the proxy class to communicate with the WCF service while it has already been faulted. Okay, so here what are we doing? We are checking the client state. If it is faulted, create a new instance of the proxy class, which will then be used to communicate with the WCF service. All right. The advantages and disadvantages of hosting a WCF service in a Windows application is very much similar to, you know, hosting the WCF service in a console application. You know, the only difference between a console application and a Windows Forms application is that within Windows Forms application, you have a graphical user interface basically to start and stop your services. But with console application, we don't get that. But in either cases, do we really use these forms of, you know, hosting a WCF service? 
service in real world now these are ideal for you know testing your WCF services but not for your production live WCF services in a later video session we'll see how to actually host the WCF service in a vendor service you know which is one of the options for live WCF services and the most common way today is actually hosting the WCF services within IIS where we have you know Windows activation services enabled we will discuss both of these options in our upcoming videos that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day